more crimes. It's called Jennifer and Michelle's Law. It's one way to honor those two little girls, two innocents, riding their bikes through a park on a sunny day. That's all for now. I'm Lester Holt. Thanks for joining us. NBC4 News at 11 starts with breaking news. That breaking news at 11, tensions escalating even more in the Middle East. As Iran fires hundreds of rockets into Israel and tonight, Israel vows retaliation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Colleen Williams. Today, President Biden said the U.S. stands with Israel and that the attack was defeated. NBC4's Tracy Leong in our News Operations Center with the latest. Tracy. Colleen, Iran has confirmed that the attack on Israel has concluded. Nearly all the missiles were blocked, and the Israeli military said there weren't any casualties from this attack. Sirens went off across Israel, warning of an Iranian missile attack Tuesday evening. Iran fired about 200 ballistic missiles into Israel. Israel's Iron Dome, along with the support from the U.S. naval forces, intercepted nearly all of them. President Joe Biden calling the Iranian attack ineffective. Make no mistake, the United States is fully, fully, fully supportive of Israel. The Iranian attack comes after Israel's invasion into Lebanon and an Israeli airstrike targeting Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of the Iranian-backed militant group Hezbollah. It is doing everything it can to find that balance between responding, retaliating in a way that maintains its credibility with its multiple constituencies and at the same time not drawing Israel or the United States or other states into a broader conflict that it cannot win. UCLA Global Studies lecturer Benjamin Rad says the urgency for Iran to respond this time around was far greater than when the nation attacked Israel back in April. The killing of Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniya, in Tehran, which has been attributed to Israel, and then coupled with that, we have now the killing of the leader of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, that represents sort of the premier proxy group as part of Iran's axis of resistance. The latest attack, a painful reality for those with loved ones in the Middle East. The text messages were flying back and forth. Where are you? Are you safe? American Jewish Committee well, LA Director Richard Hershout was in Israel back in April and remembers the frightening moments during the attack. But it is terribly unnerving because it is unclear the degree or the scope of the attack. And this is the kind of fear that Israel and Israelis have had to live with since October 7. And with the anniversary approaching, he's thinking of the 101 hostages still being held by Hamas. Every single one of these precious souls must be brought home as soon as possible. The time is running out. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to retaliate. He has said Iran, quote, made a big mistake and will pay for it. Reporting live at the News Operations Center, Tracy Leong, back to you in the studio. All right, Tracy, thank you for that. Tonight, a heated but somewhat cordial debate between Governor Tim Walz and Senator J.D. Vance. Their face-off could be the final showdown on the debate stage for both campaigns heading into the November election. NBC4's Conan Nolan joins us live from the newsroom with some of the takeaways from tonight's debate. Conan. Hello, Colleen. Well, Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Tim Walz appeared nervous, at least at the start, but had a stronger finish. His Republican counterpart, J.D. Vance, clearly was hoping to soften his image, which he did. Both campaigns say they were happy with the result. Senator. It was surprisingly civil. Tim, first of all, I didn't know that your 17-year-old witnessed the shooting. And I'm sorry about that, and I, I hope appreciate you're doing okay. So. I 100 percent believe that Senator Vance hates it when these kids, it, it, it's abhorrent. Republican Senator J.D. Vance and Democratic Governor Tim Walz both expressed support for Israel following today's Iranian missile attack, but disagreed on which administration would best navigate the Middle East conflict. But what's fundamental here is that steady leadership is going to matter. Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. Both men spent most of their time going after each other's running mate. 
You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver rising take-home pay, which of course he did. You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver lower inflation, which of course